So far in the course, we've been looking at the space of Lebesgue integrable functions from the inside. We built up the space from simpler functions in four stages, in such a way as to develop a theory of integration with various useful properties. For example, the third stage was motivated by a desire to have the limits of sequences of integrable functions themselves integrable. In the last program, we went some way towards achieving these objectives with these two theorems. But in each case, we still need conditions on our sequence of integrable functions in order that their limit should be an integrable function. For example, in this one, we need a monotone increasing sequence with bounded integrals. And in this one, we need a sequence of integrable functions which is dominated by an integrable function. Well, these conditions aren't very restrictive, not as restrictive as for Riemann integration, but they're conditions nevertheless. In other words, there are convergent sequences of integrable functions whose limit function is not integrable. You'll see a specific example of this later on. So what we have is that the space of Lebesgue integrable functions is not closed under the operation of taking limits. In this program, we're going to look outside the space of Lebesgue integrable functions at a larger class of functions called the measurable functions, which is closed under the operation of taking limits. In fact, the space M has got many nice properties which this space L1 doesn't have. But that's not the only reason we're extending our space L1. In fact, the main interest in this course is in integration. So what do we gain in integration by going outside the integrable functions? Well, you'll see later that we get a very easy criterion for integrability. Well, we're not going to define this set of measurable functions straight away. Instead, what we'll do is build up gently to the definition by looking at the sorts of properties that L1 doesn't have and extend it to get this larger set which has the properties. Well, we've seen one of these properties before, that we have a sequence of integrable functions whose limit is not integrable. And there are other properties which L1 doesn't have. For example, L1 is not closed with respect to multiplication. If we take two integrable functions, there's no guarantee that their product will be integrable. We've seen this example earlier in the course, in fact, in the last program, where we saw that it was integrable. But if we multiply it by itself, the resulting function h is not integrable. This is because its values near the origin are so large that we cannot assign a finite number as the integral of h. It's easy to prove this if we consider this increasing sequence of integrable functions. The sequence clearly converges to h, so if h were integrable, then its integral would have to be greater than each of the integrals of the h ends. But because the values near the origin are so large, the sequence of integrals is unbounded. In fact, it turns out that the integral of hn is n log 2. So there is no number which is greater than each of the integrals. There is no number we can take as the integral of h. So here we have an example of a non-integrable function h, which is the product of two integrable functions. This just shows that L1 is not closed with respect to multiplication. So that's another problem with L1. It, it's not closed under multiplication, just as we've seen that it's not closed under the taking of limits. By the way, Ian's example is, is another illustration of this. He showed us a sequence of integrable functions hn whose limit function h was not integrable. We'll see that this space m of measurable functions is closed under taking limits, under multiplication, in fact, under all the same operations that you could possibly think of. Well, that's one good thing about M, but L1 has some other drawbacks too, which M doesn't have. For example, there are lots of nice, simple, everyday functions that you'd come across which aren't in L1 at all. Well, here are two of them. 
we've already seen that this function up here is not integrable, and this extended version is also not integrable. This is the function which is 1 over x everywhere, except at the origin where it's 0. And it's quite easy to show that this function is not integrable, because if it were, then its modulus would also have to be integrable. But its modulus has a graph which looks like this on this side. And so we would get this bad behavior at both sides of the origin. So both of these examples fail to be integrable, because they get too large too quickly in either or both of these directions. But we can also make examples which fail to be integrable because of their bad behavior in these directions. They fail to get small enough quickly enough. And there's an obvious example of such a function. The constant function doesn't decrease at all. If we wanted to integrate it, we might try using an increasing sequence of step functions which converges to f. But the sequence of integrals is unbounded. So if you try to take the limit of the integrals as the integral of f, we will get an infinite value. So the constant function f is not integrable. And the same is true of many simple continuous functions. For example, if we wanted to integrate this function, we might try using the monotone convergence theorem by taking an increasing sequence of integrable functions which converge to f. But again, the sequence of integrals is unbounded, so we would get an infinite value for the integral of f. So that's shown you four examples of common or garden or household functions which are not integrable. These two, and by the way, this one often occurs in applications. These two functions, because they go wrong in these directions, and two functions which go wrong because they're, what we might say, because they're too wide. The constant function and this function. In fact, there are many more functions which aren't in L1, but which are in M. In fact, this space M contains everything except very insane functions. It contains all the sorts of functions that you'd ever want in mathematics or physics. But, well, that's, uh, we'll see that actually later on when we give a definition for the measurable functions. But that's not all there is to the measurable functions. In fact, the measurable functions are closed under all the sane operations that you can think about. Well, we've seen taking limits and multiplication. OK, you might say, well, that's true of the space of all functions. That's also closed under all the operations and functions. What do we gain by going into the smaller set, m? Well, we gain, as I said previously, a very easy criterion for the integrability of a function. It's much easier to tell if a function is integrable starting in here than starting from the space f of all functions. In other words, it's much easier to home in on L1 starting from the set of measurable functions than starting from the space of all functions. Well, I've been going on and on talking about measurable functions, and we haven't even defined them yet. So let's define them. Let's define them in such a way as to extend our space L1 to include all the same sort of functions that Ian was talking about before. Let's look at this function first. We've already seen that it's not integrable yet it's going to turn out to be a measurable function. Now, our definition of measurable functions is going to use integration. We're going to think of certain cut-down-to-size versions of these functions. as If they're integrable, then we're going to say the function is measurable. Well, for this function, there's some obvious cut-down-to-size integrable versions that we've already seen when we saw that this function was not integrable. We looked at this sequence of functions, which take the same values as f on wider and wider intervals. In this sense, each fn is a sort of cut-down version of f. And we know that each fn is integrable. In fact, if we used any bounded interval i on which to support a cut-down version of f, this version would still be integrable. 
And the same kind of thing obviously works for the constant function. So to get both the constant function and this function as being measurable, we could try the following definition. We could say that a function is measurable if that part of it on any finite bounded interval such as this, if such a part of it is integrable. Well, such a definition would obviously make this and the constant function measurable. But unfortunately, it does not follow from this that the function 1 over x would be measurable. It's no use just cutting down this function on the left and right, because the function we get is still not integrable. It's upwards and downwards where the trouble lies. The values near the origin increase and decrease so steeply that we can't get a value for the integral. So to cut down the function to an integrable one, we have to truncate it above and below, as well as to the left and right. And that's how we're going to define measurable. We're going to say that a function f is measurable if this white truncated version is integrable. And we've got a name for this truncated function. We call it the mid of minus k chi i f and k chi i. Mid stands for middle. And this mid function is the function whose value at any particular point x is the middle of the values of this, this, and this at that particular point. Well, let's see how it works for this particular choice of the function f. Suppose that we take a point somewhere, say, here. Then f has this value at this point. k chi i and minus, minus k chi i are both 0 at this point. So the middle of the two zeros and this value is 0. So the mid function has the value 0 at this point and also everywhere up to here. Now suppose we look at a point here, for example then k chi i has a value up here, f has a value here, minus k chi i has a value down here. So the mid function will take this value at this point. And moving along, we get these values as the values of the mid function until we get to this point. Then the values of f drop down, minus k chi i is here, k chi i is up here, so the mid values follow along this line until we get to the origin. Then the mid value is 0. And as we move along some more, we jump up to here, because the values of f are so far above us up there. And repeating, we get the values of the mid function along there, down there, then dropping down to 0. And that's our definition of measurable. A function f is going to be measurable if this mid function, for all choices of bounded interval i, and all choices of the number k, if for all those choices, the mid function is integrable. Well, with that definition, is in fact this function f, this 1 over x function, measurable? Well, to check that, let's again look at the mid function for this choice of i and k. What have we got? The function is in white, and you can see that it's 0 outside the bounded interval i. It's bounded on that interval by k and minus k, and it's continuous everywhere except at this point, this point and this point. So the set of discontinuities of this function form a null set. And we know from a theorem earlier in the course that that's enough to make such a function integrable. So that definition does in fact put 1, x, uh, 1 over x inside our space of measurable functions. And here's the definition written out at long last. We say that a function f is measurable if that mid function that Ian's just described is integrable for every real number k and every bounded interval i. Well, now that we have a definition of a measurable function, we're in a position to check these three properties that I said this space m possessed. Well, let's look at the first one. We said it contains all sane functions. Well, obviously, we can't check all the functions, but let's have a look at these four functions that Ian showed us which weren't integrable. Well, I've already shown that this function is measurable, and the same sort of argument will obviously show that the cut-down version is also measurable. The other functions we looked at were this one and the constant function. And if we truncate with an interval i, such as this, we get something integrable. So truncating in these directions, we still get something integrable, so that both of these functions are measurable. 
So we've shown that all four of the functions which we saw earlier were not integrable are in fact measurable. And we can extend this sort of argument to a whole class of functions, the functions which are continuous almost everywhere. But there's a more important class of functions, the ones that we've been looking at for most of this course, the functions in L1. We wanted these measurable functions to be an extension of L1. So we have to check that an integrable function is in fact measurable. Well, we can indicate how that goes by looking at this mid function. If f is actually integrable, then this is integrable as well as this function. And you'll find in the correspondence text that we're able to write the mid of three functions in terms of the maxes and mins of pairs of functions. So if all three of these were integrable, each of these maxes and mins of pairs of integrable functions are integrable, and hence so is the mid function. And in this way, we show that every integrable function must be measurable. So I think you'll agree that this justifies our claim that this space M contains all sane functions. In fact, you probably think that M contains every function. You're not far wrong. You'd have to get up very early in the morning to devise a non-measurable function. But there is one in the correspondence text. But let's look at the, the second property, uh, closed under all sane operations. Well, we've seen that L1 isn't closed under taking limits or multiplication. In fact, M is closed under both those operations. Well, let's look at the operation of taking limits first. What we have to show is that the limit of a convergence sequence of measurable functions is itself measurable. We already know that this function is measurable. So let us suppose that it turns up as a member of a sequence of measurable functions which converges almost everywhere. We want to find out whether the limit function f is also measurable. Well, each fn being measurable means, by definition, that each of these functions is integrable for arbitrary k and i. So we want to know whether this function is integrable. We prove this by the dominated convergence theorem. First, we note that the function h is the limit function almost everywhere of the h n's. Think about this after the program, and you'll see that it's right. Now, if we can show that the h n's are dominated by an integrable function, then the dominated convergence theorem will tell us that h is integrable, and hence that f is measurable. Well, h n is this mid function here, and what we've got to do is to try and find an integrable function which is greater than or equal to the modulus of this mid function. Well, here is the graph of the mid function, and we can see that its values lie below k and above minus k. Well, this just says that the modulus of this mid function is less than or equal to k, is in fact less than or equal to k chi i. Now, k chi i is a step function and so is integrable. So this mid function is dominated by the integrable function k chi i, and hence the limit of the sequence of h n's, the h, is integrable, and so the limit of this sequence of measurable functions is measurable. So the measurables are closed under the operation of taking limits, a and under multiplication too, and under addition, that's why I call it a space, in fact, under most operations. Well, we haven't got time to prove that. Here you'll find the proofs in the correspondence text. But what about the third claim that we made for M, that it's very easy to home in on L1 from this space M? Well, to do that, we'll use a definition of measurability, which is exactly equivalent to the one I have here. The proof of the equivalence is in the correspondence text, but it's rather more convenient for our purposes. We'll say that F is measurable if this mid function is integrable, but we replace this very special integrable function by a general positive integrable function, g. Well, we've written out this alternative equivalent definition of measurability. It says that a function f is measurable if the mid of f with any positive integrable function g, if the mid of those is integrable. And this is tailor-made for the criterion for integrability of a measurable function. 
the criterion turns out to be this. It says that if f is a measurable function, and we can find a function g, which on the one hand is integrable, and on the other hand is greater than or equal to the modulus of f, if we can do that, then f will actually be integrable. And it's quite easy to see how this follows from the definition up here. Because look at this criterion. Suppose we have f measurable, and we have such a function g. Then what this tells us is that the values of the function f must be less than or equal to the values of the function g, but greater than or equal to the values of the function minus g. Now, come up to the definition. This says that if f is measurable, this mid function must be integrable for all choices of positive integrable function g. But now apply this with the particular choice of g we've got from our criteria. Then what we find is that the mid of minus g f g must actually be f itself. So that this tells us that f is integrable. So again, repeating, the criterion works like this. In order to show that a function f, which is measurable, a measurable function, it will be integrable if we can find a positive integrable function g, which is greater than or equal to the modulus of f. Well, that, that's the measurable functions. We've defined them in such a way as to extend our space L1 in order to include all the reasonable sort of functions that you'd ever come across. And when we did that, we found that they had, uh, M had some very nice properties. It, uh, first of all, contained all of these functions. It was closed under any sort of mathematical operation you could conceive of. And as we've just seen, it gives us this very neat criterion for integrability. Now, this space M of measurable functions is very rich. In fact, it's so rich that you need never wander outside of it in mathematics, physics, analysis, or anything. Later on in the course, we'll have occasion to wander outside the space L1, but we never go outside this space of measurable functions.